July is the FDA webpage on hydroxychloroquine. Mm. So the FDA webpage was mounted July 1st of 2020. It's been there for two years. It's a fraud. The, the webpage says, warning, hydroxychloroquine should not be used in outpatient treatment because of risk of cardiac adverse events. That's in the big bold letters. And then underneath, in small print, it says, we base this warning on adverse events that we've observed in the treatment of hospitalized patients. Now, there's two things about this. First is that uh, COVID-19 is a completely different disease in outpatients and hospital patients. In outpatients, it's a flu-like illness with cough, muscle aches, fever, sore throat, um, sneezing, you know, and so on, uh, tiredness, uh, headaches, the, the standard things that people get in, you know, severe colds or flu. However, on about day eight plus or minus in, in a sub subset of people, they progress to a more intense pulmonary illness that's an, uh, an ammonia-like illness where the immune system overreacts and deposits a, a lot of immune debris in the lungs and makes breathing difficult and oxygenation difficult. That's a kind of acute respiratory distress syndrome that requires hospitalization. That's a totally different disease. It has a different treatment. It is, it is totally unrelated to outpatient treatment. Nevertheless, the FDA said, we base our recommendation on against outpatient treatment on the basis of hospital experience. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, you can understand that if the FDA actually had any evidence to support adverse events in the treatment of outpatients, it would have said that. Mm -hmm. On a website talking about outpatient treatment, if they thought they could suppress outpatient treatment because they had evidence in outpatients, they would have used that. That would have been the first line of argument. And since that is missing from this webpage, it proves that they do not have systematic evidence of outpatient ill effects in using hydroxychloroquine in outpatients. Now, why this is the biggest lie is that this was the crux of the whole pandemic in the first place that the suppression of hydroxychloroquine started before anybody even knew there was a pandemic and uh, before President Trump had even said anything. It started, to my knowledge, in fall of 2019 when the Minister of Health in France changed the status of hydroxychloroquine from an over-the-counter medication that anybody could just go to the drugstore and buy to a prescription-only medication. She cited completely false uh, uh, theory that hydroxychloroquine was what was called geno toxic, that it had caused genetic damage in cells. This is completely Im impossible. This medication has been used in tens of billions of doses and hundreds of millions of people for half a century or more. It is one of the most um, important medications on the World Health Organization's list of the top 50 required med medicines. It's used in pregnant women and in infants and children. Uh, it's just one of the safest medications known. And yet the FDA had the nerve to purport to say that, that somehow a very safe medication that everybody knows is safe is somehow suddenly unsafe to be used in outpatients. And by the way, we're not showing you any data that it's unsafe. So this is the biggest lie. Had this medication been used at the outset of this pandemic, it would have saved hundreds of thousands of lives that were needlessly lost for, because this was suppressed for a year while, while pe patients waited for vaccines you know, and, and whatever one thinks of the vaccines, this time period of a, of a year lost led to hundreds of thousands of unnecessary deaths that would have been treated. And had we been able to treat this disease adequately, the necessity of vaccines would not nearly have been as important and maybe not important at all. And that is the crux of the whole pandemic, that this pandemic was not used to protect the health of the population. It was used to sell vaccines and patent medications a tremendous, tremendous profit to the pharma industry with the collusion of the FDA and the CDC. And this is the nature of, of what we've been fighting over the last two and a half years. Not the virus per se, but, but our corrupted response to the virus.